give you uh, an update on the InfraKit project. Hello. Uh, hi, um, I'm David, David Chung. Um, I work on the uh, InfraKit project. Um, I, along with uh, three other uh, outside maintainers, are um, you know, uh, basically forming the core of InfraKit. And uh, I'm here to give you a brief update of the project status. So first of all, before I start anything else, I think a lot of you have heard about, um, infra well, a lot of you have heard InfraKit being talked about here and there um, up until this point. So kind of give you an idea what exactly InfraKit is. It's, um, it's really a, a toolkit for infrastructure work automation. Um, if you, um, over here on the left, you see that uh, there's a, I don't know if you can really see it clearly, but there's the, the it's the uh, sort of the prescriptive CNCF uh, stack. Um, and InfraKit sort of sits at the, the layer in, uh, in the provisioning layer right above the infrastructure, whether it's bare metal, cloud, or your virtualized environment. So we're pretty much like the one la layer down from the container D um, and then uh, obviously working your way up, you will start to see systems such as Kubernetes or Docker Swarm. So our role in the infrared world is to make sure that we spin up the environment so that the higher level systems, uh, the northbound systems, if you will, like the container orchestrators, such as Kubernetes or Docker Swarm, can actually exist. So you can think of us as the installer for day zero, day one, configure, um, and also the toolkit and the UI to allow you to operate on your infrastructure. And we focus on a number of things. We focus on patterns and automation. So we, we have a declarative specification that allowed and that the system really works as a set of microcontrollers to work collaboratively to make sure that your infrastructure environment actually matches that specification. And we provide some uh, common patterns that you typically see in the public cloud. So for example, things like scaling groups. Um, we are providing in such a way that you can actually see that not only in, in the public cloud, but also in your own on-prem um, bare metal environment as well. And we worry about, we, we think about how to do rolling upgrades of machines. So this is where we naturally integrate well with systems such as Linux Kit, where you get to build your own custom OS images but let InfraKit to actually worry about how to do, how to roll out and deploy the customized images that you just created. And we also provide some additional things in terms of how do you, um, how do you introspect your infrastructure? How do you get metadata information about your infrastructure in terms of what network is it on? What subnets? Um, what's that environment looking like? Um, and also the events that's happening within that infrastructure. And finally, we really focus on immutable infrastructure. And that's, so that is very much in line with the Linux kit philosophy of creating customized images or use images in such, you know, OS images in such a way that your infrastructure is really immutable and InfraKit has primitives to support that. So this is an example of a declarative com configuration. The declarative configuration looks very much like uh, it's in YAML. You can also compose it in JSON. But it's really, in, in reality, it's, a, it's in some ways a, light, a little bit like uh, Helm charts in that it's a YAML file that supports um, template expressions. So this allows you to define variables, have various functions that you can use to operate um, to really, gen finally, the system renders the actual configuration before it sends off to the rest of the controllers. So in terms of UX, uh, well, well, where does it really fit? So logically, you can kind of think of InfraKit as a equivalent of, of the tool that allows you to operate on infrastructure. So if, using the example of a public cloud, for uh, you, you know, let's say, for example, you're running on GKE, or if you're running things on AWS or Azure, you typically will operate things using your Kubernetes, kubectl, or your Docker command line to manipulate your services or your containers. But when you want to start dealing with nodes, in resources, you typically will use a different CLI, such as G-Cloud, AWS CLI, or the Azure CLI. And InfraKit has a CLI that essentially provides that role. So that's sort of the mental mapping that you can think of in terms of where InfraKit sort of position itself. So this is how we like to grow the project. 
So ultimately, what we want to become is the single CLI user experience across all the environments. So in some way, that just as you, instead of having to switch to different tools based on the, the cloud providers that you're using, ideally, you only have to use a single tool to be able to work across all your cloud environments. And now, at this point, we have coverage from not only the public cloud, such as AWS, GCP, um, we also have um, coverage for virtualized environments, such as KVM, and vSphere is coming, and as well as actual bare metal uh, infrastructure, such as the Ubuntu um, Metal as a Service, MAS, and HP One View as N, Rack HD. So from an architecture standpoint, and referring back to the, the prescriptive CNCF stack, um, what you see here is so that, that provisioning layer exploded. And the way we think about our system is really a, a set of microcontrollers that are working collaboratively together. So we have the notion of, of handling events, handling metadata. Um, we have the notion of how to manage groups of nodes. So we have group controllers. And there are a lot of other things that, that really kind of make the whole system come together in terms of how do, we, how do you think about managing dependencies across resources, and how do you store and manage um, user specifications, and how do you process these sort of you know, configuration templates. And the system as a whole starts to export um, APIs that the higher system can leverage. So we will have, we, we have the semantics of um, like an auto scaling group so that the higher level systems such as Kubernetes or Docker Swarm will have an API to say scale up and down so that you can not only dynamically scale your, your services in terms of containers, but you can also grow your cluster dynamically as well. And Infricate obviously manages all the interaction with the southbound system, and that is your infrastructure. So in terms of roadmap, um, I, I'd like to give you a quick update. So as Patrick mentioned earlier, uh, we have recently done a presentation to CNCF, uh, the Technical Oversight Committee, uh, to really start the conversation to, and, and the education process to let people know more about Infricate as a project and how Infricate as a project and its, and its capabilities could benefit the rest of the CNCF projects. Um, and really, hopefully, we can bring a lot to the ecosystem as a whole. And there's also some more um, recent presentation at OSCON, uh, that, and that just happened um, within the last couple of months. So some of the things that we really want to do that our key objectives for us are, number one, um, support more platforms. So in the last couple months, we have, um, we have new um, controllers and we have new plugins that, that finally uh, have been uh, submitted and merged in uh, and, and thanks to the contributors from the committee. So now we have support for DigitalOcean. Uh, we have uh, support for Packet.net. So that's a bare metal uh, in the bare metal cloud um, implementation. And we also have LiveVirt driver for virtualized environments now. And what we're currently working on, and that's hopefully going to be coming soon, is the Azure um, instance plugin that allows us to provision Azure compute resources, as well as IBM and vSphere. And these are, these are now currently being active work, actively worked on, so we expect to see PRs coming in very soon. And we also have created uh, controllers for different types uh, of resources beyond just instances, such as volumes and subnets on AWS. And also thanks to the, uh, the contribution from uh, our partners at um, IBM, we actually improved our Terraform integration. So a lot of times we get questions from people saying, how do you compare and contrast te um, Infricate with Terraform? Well, we, we, we like to think of us as a, a superset of what Terraform does. So by doing um, active monitoring and control of your environment, um, but we also have to think about how do you stand up an environment in as a one-shot process in terms of bootstrapping. So that's where we, that's where some of our integration with Terraform really has started to come into play and, and really has uh, give us a lot of really interesting capabilities so that you can use Terraform to stand up parts of your environment, maybe like a VPC, a subnet, um, and then have Infricate take over by actually providing the auto scaling group capabilities and, and active monitoring. Uh, so, so we see these two systems really starting to work collaboratively and, co and complementary, thanks to the contributions from our partners. And 
a big thing that we're doing now within the project is that we're starting to consolidate all the plugins back into the same, uh, the main Infricate repo. And this, we're doing this so that we like our users to have a single place to get all the different implementations. And so that uh, it, it overall not only reduces the burden um, and the, the friction for them to try things out, but also helps us to have a single place where we can more easily iterate and evolve the, in, the interfaces and, and ensure the quality of all the plugins across the, all the different platforms. And as I said, we want to support more use cases. And in the last couple months, we also had a PR that came in uh, that allowed us uh, to bootstrap and install Kubernetes cluster. So uh, this is a great contribution from um, the team over at uh, NTT, and, uh, and it has been recently merged in. And we also have done a very quick, uh, simple PLC of Linux Kit integration. And this the integration leverages a feature within InfraKit called Playbooks, which is a dynamic scriptable UI, uh, CLI. Um, and that sort of showcases the, the capability of how to bring InfraKit and Linux Kit together to form a complete end-to-end um, -end sing, single integrated workflow from defining your OS images, to building them, to pushing them, to finally running them, deploying them in the cluster. And obviously, we are very focused on the day end aspect of management of infrastructure, so we're, we're continuously working on uh, improving those things um, in terms of making sure things are more scalable, more stable, fixing a lot of bugs and issues. Um, so those are always ongoing. And one of the key things I want to talk about is sort of also improve the usability. Because earlier I talked, you know, as I've shown you in the diagrams, Infricate is more than just a bunch of controllers. There's actually also a user-facing aspect to it because we expect the tool to be, whoa, never mind. I don't know what happened there. Thanks to the, uh, Sorry. <laughs> Thing. Oh, and it just, my slide disappeared. Ah, here we go. It's actually the whole, my whole, uh, it actually killed the whole uh, presentation. So, uh, note to self, don't use Google Calendar <laughs> before you do a presentation. Uh, let me see if I can find another. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, it, oh wait, oh there it is. It, it sent it to a totally different desktop, so note to self, learn how to use desktops. Um, so yeah, improve usability. So we, we do have a user-facing part, um, so we're very focused on how to provide a user-facing tool that is that can cover really a lot of uh, tricky use cases in uh, infrastructure management because one of the things that's so complex about infrastructure management is that it covered, there's a lot of stuff, that there's a lot of details that is specific to the environment that you're running on. And people want to build operational knowledges and consolidate them, distill them into some shareable unit of work that, that they can disseminate with their colleagues and be able to reuse. So we, we started thinking about a lot of the concepts around like, you know, how do you build templates? How do you build things? Uh, how do you build dynamic CLI so that that can itself be data driven? Um, so we now, in, the, in terms of the infrared command line interface itself, is, is, is not only con context-based, um, it also allows you to um, load what we call playbooks. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, so these are all the little things that actually allowed us to make the system all, as a whole more usable in addition to the controllers that you really typically don't see. And we're all, we'll also start thinking about how do we really improve that experience and, and focus on better packaging. And one of the big drivers for this is Linux, our integration with Linux Kit um, because of certain requirements around how to actually, we, we would like the idea, we would like to be able to uh, support and enable you to actually take a Linux um, an InfraKit um, package and just embed that natively into your Linux Kit um, machine image and just be able to deploy. And, and that is, you know, that is a, a really an ideal way of deploying InfraKit along with your, the rest of your application and your infrastructure. 
So some of the things that we're looking at for V uh, version 0.6, which we're currently thinking about uh, around the September timeframe, is uh, number one, first of all, a, a new um, service provider interface for flows. Because currently we think about, we're focusing on managing clusters. We have the notion of groups, auto scaling groups, and we're able, able to do rolling updates, but ultimately we want to start give more coverage into what, you know, our capabilities in managing the infrastructure. And one logical next step is to start thinking about flows or otherwise known as ingress or low balancing, low balance or provisioning and updates. So that's coming and also the more generalized resource provisioning so that either through deeper integration with Terraform or start providing capabilities that are very much, that are similar to, to Terraform itself. And we are now starting to work on actual API that we can expose of Infrakit as a whole to the upper, um, the northbound system. So that you, Infrakit itself now will start offering an API that can be used by your container orchestrator to actually scale it up and down and bring elasticity to the cluster itself. And a natural fallout of that is we will be able to implement a cloud provider implementation for Kubernetes cluster autoscaler. And that's a project that has recently, um, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's still in beta, but uh, it's a project that's, that's been going on for quite a while with the Kubernetes, within the Kubernetes community and to provide a, um, essentially a cluster autoscaler that can, that works in conjunction with the horizontal pod autoscaler so that to bring true elasticity and, and true elasticity to the cluster itself. And currently they only have a few implementations that are primarily focused on the public cloud. And because Infrakit actually works across all different kinds of environment from cloud to bare metal to virtualized environments such as liver and KVM. So we think we have an opportunity to, to, to really help out the community and provide some value there. And also, some of our communities are now really starting to look at some of the more specialized use cases, such as GPU provisioning. And that itself has bring about a set of requirements and things to consider, so we're actively working on that. Linux kit integration, um, a lot of that, as I mentioned, um, different packaging, consolidating the binaries. And a lot of people are also are thinking about is, well, how, you know, we all, oftentimes we think about monitoring. Infrakit has a notion of health. Uh, and monitoring as well. But people who like to use systems such as Prometheus and are already using Prometheus, well, how do we actually integrate the two systems? So you expect uh, changes that are coming in uh, within Infrakit to actually bring the two systems closer together. And by that, I mean that Infrakit will not only be able to export metrics for Prometheus to consume down the road, but will also have the ability to actually pull the metrics from your existing uh, Prometheus enabled nodes. So for, and, and one of the use cases that we'll be able to support is, for example, be able to, um, through the, the GPU node exporter, we'll be able to pull data from our GPU nodes and feed that into what we call the flavor to give the cluster a sense of how healthy my GPU cluster is. And finally, uh, we want to really kind of clean up and streamline the CLI itself. This is a very important part of the user experience. Um, the, we, we are focused on optimizing and improving operators' um, happiness. So um, we really need your feedback in terms of you know, playing around with the tool and see how that actually will help you from an operation standpoint. So we expect a lot of changes to go in to actually improve the CLI itself. So let me kind of just, I think I should just kind of go into a few minutes. I got. 10, 10 minutes um, to kind of give you a sense of sort of what Infrakit is. I don't know if you, um, we've done a few changes to the point where Infrakit, um, to try out Infrakit, you no longer have to uh, download, you no longer have to clone the repo. You just need to run a simple command um, um, and, and Infrakit is actually able to cross compile itself on your local environment and installs itself. And we're, we're thinking about adding um, Homebrew tap in so you can install it using Homebrew and other tools. But if you go into the Infrakit command itself, um, Infrakit itself is, this whole CLI itself is dynamic, um, meaning that if you're right now looking at this and say, well, what are the options in, in, in Infrakit? Well, it, it kind of gives you a set of available commands, 
But InfraKit only really has a notion of being able to, you can connect to different um, backend systems. So in this case, I have a Docker for Mac and, um, backend, as well as a cluster, which I've set up on, um, as well as a cluster that I've set up on AWS. So I'm gonna, and to switch between environment is as simple as, so let me see. It's as simple as pointing to one of these hosts. So now if I do InfraKit, Of course, it's not working. Oh, that's because the swarm leader changed. Um, so, come here to you. And this, just so you know, this is actually a live swarm. And the way that Infricate works is that uh, when we communicate to the infra remote Infricate cluster, we communicate to the uh, uh, the leader of the cluster. So in this case, um, for the last 10 minutes, I've been noticing that the, the Swarm Quorum on uh, AWS has been switching, changing leadership. So, um, so that makes it kind of a moving target. Uh, let's see which one is. So the 103 is the leader right now. Let's do this. I'm just going to do this live. So let's say I have an IP. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do it. If I kid, add test and host. Now I want to point to test. So you notice that the, the CLI automatically discovers the actual plugins that's running in that remote system. And when I do, depending on what I do with the CLI, it actually changes a lot. You, you notice that there are all these new commands that are available now. And that's, in, in a, that's specific to the AWS environment because I'm actually working with a cluster that has AWS specific things. And over there in that cluster, you notice that uh, I can see about the ES, the, the EC2 instance controller. I have some um, what we call flavors, and that's uh, those are things that are, the controllers are specifically dedicated to managing Docker Swarm, um, and a number of things. So depending on, based on my, where I run my, um, what, which environment I target my CLI to, I can actually access different kinds of information. So, and we've also recently added some niceties such as um, auto, auto complete, batch completion. But uh, so this is how I can kind of take a look and say, okay, well, these are all the, ins these are all the instances that's currently running on, on AWS. And uh, to prove the point here, we've seen these are the, that was there, and you can also get details directly. You can get everything that you need to know about your AWS instances, all the way down to the EBS device mapping, a bunch of information that's there. And so now, Infricate has a notion of manager, and manager is the endpoint that you, allows you to get everything you need you need to know about your entire cluster. So by inspecting this cluster, I can see that I currently have a two nodes that are Docker swarm workers and a set of three nodes with dedicated IP, with specially assigned IP addresses that are functioning as swarm managers. 
And if you want to change your cluster, so now, Ifrica has a notion of, uh, we, we, instead of, while we allow you to edit a complex YAML file, we also allow you to operate things in terms of paths. So this, as an example here, So these are all the properties, if you will, of the cluster that you're able to interrogate and, um, and, and change. So for example here, maybe I want to see the swarm workers, so I want to just cat it. It comes back and tells you two. Now if you want to change it, can also operate it by using a name value, uh, key value syntax. So now, in this case, what you see here oh, so it was two nodes, let's change it to four. Oh, great. They just change the leader again. So, and I have no idea why um, the swarm, it's kind of, well, you get the idea. So now we're, we're back here, we're back to the 101. Oh, something's going on. So as a, as a side, the reason you're seeing this is that Infricate itself doesn't do a leader election. Instead, Infricate runs in a high availability mode and piggybacks itself on top of whatever the actual system that it's, it's meant to be run, it's running with. So in this case, it actually uses a Docker Swarm itself for leader election and storing the state. And so you, you see this sort of the case where sometimes we're contacting um, one node in the remote cluster and things change, but it's because the actual, um, the Swarm cluster leader is actually changing. So Infricus sort of follows that. Um, this, we, this is a design choice that we made to avoid having essentially two control planes that's running in your, in your clusters because at its heart, Infrica is meant to be embedded into whatever the system that it's, it's, it's supposed to be running with, whether it's Docker Swarm or Kubernetes. Um, I'm almost out of time, so I want to show you something just really quick in terms of the playbook and 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 under better circumstances, what it will do is it will do syntax highlighting. It will tell you what you're changing and whether you want to commit it or not. So, but you had to take my word for it. So, let me just... So, Infrica has a notion in playbooks, and uh, here I'm going to add a playbook called Linux Kit, and that is available here at the Infricit um, repo. So you see here, we, so to add a playbook, just add a URL. So now when I come back and say, well, where are, the, where are the commands itself? You see that now there's a new command here called Linux Kit. And what are the things I can do with Linux Kit? Within that playbook, which you can build, and playbooks are totally the things that you can define and build yourself without touching ever a, a single line of Go code. It, it's really these things that it's hard are just a lot of templates that run in different, whether you want to run it against shell, you can define the images, you can define your own command line flags, you can define your own prompts. Um, it's something that allows you to sort of encapsulate a lot of things that you want to do and expose that, have that as a, as a CLI that you can offer to your, to your user and say, you know, if you need to do a certain number of tasks, run this playbook and these are the commands that are available to help you um, simplify your operations and, and work on, on the infrastructure. So, as an example here, I have a, let me start up, it's 
the whole infricate itself on the local environment. So you see that it's asking if I want to start up a bunch of containers. So now I can point infricate to the, my Docker for Mac installation. And now you see that the commands dynamically change too. Now I can start accessing my local HyperKit um, plugin. I can access my local um, the packet uh, driver for deploying the server itself to, to packet, um, packet host. And I can do more other things such as now maybe we have a task called demo the SSHD Linux gig example. So now we have a command called build image. Running as a, from a command line, you can either pass in the key name or SSH directory, or you just simple, simply follow along. And this will actually build your Linux kit image right there for you. Um, so this is the kind of things that, that you can really put together the entire experience without actually going, cloning the repo, forking the infrared itself, make a bunch of changes, but instead you simply create these templates and playbooks, and now you can draw together a lot of diverse set of tools to give your operators, uh, your users, a complete experience in terms, of how, in terms of how they should manage their environment. So this is some of the things that we've been working on in the past couple of months, and uh, we will start, um, um, you know, uh, really provide better documentation, tutorials. So do expect that uh, more information from this in the coming um, in the coming um, weeks, hopefully. So, Yeah, there are actually there are existing um, there are existing documentations on how to create your own plugins. So plugins are typically the case if if you're trying to support specialized hardware or or environment. So we do have documentation for that. Um, the playbook and templating lang the templating engine within Infrakit is fairly new. Um, it, it takes a lot of the, um, in terms of design, um, it's very similar to Helm charts, and it, but we also obviously have integration into the CLI itself, so you can dynamically build con context-based, um, you know, command line interfaces. Um, those are coming in, ter in terms of the better documentation on how to create your own and, and even publish your own playbooks. Um, so, so do expect that, um, that will be coming soon. And so how can you help? Well, play play with these uh, because uh, the way InfraKit is set up now, you don't need, you no longer need to clone the repo. You don't need to be a Go playing programmer. Uh, you can do, you can do a lot of uh, things with it and play around. So we encourage you to play and uh, give us feedback. You know, when stuff doesn't work, doesn't make sense, it's confusing, feel free to drop us a note on Slack and let us know. Um, and, and, you know, if you get around any kind of uh, documentation help, um, will be greatly appreciated because that's where we know, we, you know from your, we learn from your experience. And also help us improve our uh, testing on the real platforms because obviously we want to make sure that the InfraKit plugin work as promised on uh, all the different infrastructure providers that are out there. Um, so this is how you can find us, um, docker slash InfraKit on GitHub and on the Slack um, InfraKit channel. So, and that's it, thank you very much. I was just wondering, um, do you, uh, when you're deploying infrastructure and sort of managing the OSs there, do you have plans for uh, other OSs, so like Windows or anything else? Um, I'm sorry, what was Do you have plans for managing deployments of other OSs, uh, like Windows, say? I mean, all these, like Linux kit and stuff like that, that's all Linux based, so I'm just wondering about. Um, I, that's definitely our plan to, to start a more, you know, really move into not only working with Linux based or Linux kit based systems, but also Windows. But uh, obviously I think, you know, in terms of how to go about it, we, we definitely want, want to find people from the community to help, help us and partner with us on that. So if you have ideas in terms of how, to, you know, if you have a specific use case, for example, um, 
find me and, and, and let's chat about it. And really, uh, um, I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit more about your plans for the GPU uh, system provisioning. Like, you know, basically my, my experience right now with GPUs is first I spin up a cloud instance, uh, GPU cloud instance, and then I have to go through a bunch of stuff with the NVIDIA Docker yeah. wrapper. Is that the kind of stuff you're going to automate? Yeah, so so that that's definitely certainly a subset of what we're trying to do. Um, our use case is a little bit uh, more specific in that we also want to deal with the actual bare metal GPU boxes aspect of it, uh, because Ifrikit actually works across um, a diverse set of providers from bare metal to you know, to, to public cloud. And we already now have uh, integration with systems such as Rack HD and um, um, HP One View. So that kind of positions InfraKid very nicely in, from, in terms of how to provision the bare metal all the way on up to the actual application itself. And, and we see ourselves as a, a natural handoff at the container orchestrator level. So our role is to provision even the bare, the bare metal boxes, the, maybe your own, the, the, the servers that you build uh, with your own GPU cards, all the way on up to the actual uh, uh, GPU pinned uh, VM instances, all the way on up to um, setting up, say for example, installing TensorFlow. Um, so that's the kind of things that we're thinking about right now. And obviously that involves installing the NVIDIA driver, installing the NVIDIA no exporter for Prometheus and tying that information, feed that into the Infrica controller so that we actually have a true sense of the health of your particular GPU node. That's, that's kind of things that we're thinking about right now. Anything else? All right, thank you.